My name is Patricia Rollinson with Creative Arts Lifestyle, and today I'm going to show you how to paint a beautiful emerald lace ornament. This is a really neat little um, ornament because I've learned to do a lot of really interesting things this time. I've got this little harlequin pattern in the middle that I've got shiny with clear dots and things like that. And to do that, we came up with a unique little set of tools here. And I'm missing one. And these are fabulous for putting the lines on. I'm going to show you how to use these and to make all the measuring on lace easier. Painting lace is such a unique kind of discipline because you do a little bit of dots and a little bit of stroke and a little bit of this and that and you put it all together and it creates this beautiful lacy awesome pattern. Um, we generally use the four inch bulbs. Um, we've got a very limited selection left after Christmas. But um, now is the time to get going for next year, and I know a lot of people who make the most beautiful gifts. All right, painting lace can be kind of fun and it's super easy to do, and there's just a couple of simple tools that you'll need. Um, I like to use a craft lathe. You just secure it, you just pop that apart and secure your bulb in there for easy painting. And what's neat about that is that then your hands aren't all over it and you're not running your fingers through your dots and stuff. Um, painting lace is just a series of dots and lines. Um, with a little bit of glitter and a little bit of glass stain mixed in. That's where I'm getting that shine right there. Um, I like to use a matte bulb. Um, the matte bulb allows you to um, manipulate with the shine, so I can use clear glass stain. And then that's going to give me shiny and matte, and that just gives you a deeper look on your, um, on your lace. There's some mediums that are really fun. There's a pearl, um, little, it does little daubs, little beads of pearl colored um, medium. And then this is a glass effect gel, which is like a clear, you can use some clear glitter or colors, whichever way. I tend to use just white paint. And then there's um, stylus sets that have like all these different size heads, or you can use um, an easy dot tool. And these are actually numbered dotting tools that go from really tiny all the way up to really huge, but it allows you to control what size dots you're doing. In order to um, mark on my ornament, I'm going to use this Ghost Rider, which um, has a ceramic lead. It actually has um, a gray ceramic lead and a roller ball, which we won't use for this application, and a white ceramic lead. And then I'm going to use this very flexible um, see-through ruler. And that is going to allow me to mark and evenly divide my ornaments. So I'm going to go here, put that end in. These um, want to say things and then I get started. Um, this has um, a little hole inside there. These are removable and that allows you to stuff the head or the nose of the ornament in there. Do be careful on these craft lathes. They use petroleum jelly to lube up the um, these little plungers and if you get that on your ornament then it's going to leave, it's going to remove the matte finish. So that's not not what you want. And I think I've actually managed to do that on this ornament. Okay, so you loosen it this way, and maybe if I would take a moment and loosen it, and just slide that out, and you stuff that puppy in there, and then you get it nice and secure, and then twist it to tighten it. Then I rotate mine to make sure that I'm seated in there evenly. And I kind of eyeball it. Yeah, see, I've gotten a little bit of, see the smudge on there? That's from the petroleum jelly. Be careful with what you have on. And then another advancement that we've recently um, created for easy painting is this little, this little jewel right here. This is a painter's platform. It slides right over that, and then it allows you to use this, but it gives you a place to anchor your hand. And when I was um, playing around with measuring the other day, um, having a place to anchor your hand is unbelievably helpful. And then it also gives you measurements this way um, that is centering. So this is halfway of a four inch bulb. And then it, it shows you that this is an eighth and this is an eighth going in either direction. So this is super duper duper um, helpful. All right, the first thing I'm gonna use is this Ghost Rider and that's the ceramic lead. And oh, and by the way, the gray lead I found out just the um, last week is actually graphite, but the white one is ceramic. And they make uh, yellow, pink and other colors of lead that are also the ceramic lead. Okay, so I'm going to anchor my hand here, and I think I'm going to go for, I think I'm going to go for the third and the third, 
right here. Okay, and I'm just going to hold my hand steady and just barely, 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 I'm not pressing, I don't want dark lines. Barely, barely get a nice straight line. I'll just twist with one hand. Okay, and I'm not quite meeting it straight on the other side, so I'm going to break the difference. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing down over here. And that not quite matching up is because the bulb is not quite in there straight. That's what happens when you don't quite get it nailed. All right, so as I've been trying to get my pattern on here, I, every time I tried to get my pattern right, I can measure evenly, but I couldn't get my diamonds to go straight up and down. Okay, so um, after talking with our design team, then we came up with a series, a couple of little tools here. This little guy right here, Will give you the ability to mark on the top and in the middle and underneath and then change the sizes to make perfect upward pointing um, diamonds in the middle. And then these little guys, they have little thumb holders, are good for if you want to trace lines going in whatever direction you can trace on either side and they're just sized so that they are quarter inch, eighth inch, and half inch so that you have some measuring tools that you can use that are exactly the size and they're just long enough so that they don't quite start creeping and bowing. And then this little guy is pretty amazing because he's he's actually pretty flexible as well. So he'll actually kind of resize as you need it to. Okay, after doing this, let me bring you in just to get my little sample bowl here. After doing this, you can do by skipping the lines and I'll show you how to do that. You can make big diamonds and by not skipping the line, you can make really tiny little diamonds. Okay, so the way you're going to do this, and I'm going to show you on this, and then um, and then I'm going to come over here. I want to just kind of show you the play. All right, so what I want to do is I want to um, line up this top line with my line there. Okay, and you might need to, if you're going all the way across the span, you might need to bow it up so that this is lifted just a teeny bit. And then when you go, you're going to make just a little dot in each of these. And then you can alternate and put your alternating dots in each of the little oops, holes. And so that's how you're going to build the whole thing, is you're just going to go alternating steps. Now if you want to make it tiny, you're going to go down here and you're going to put your next line in to these little dots down there. If you want to make it bigger, you're going to drop down and you're going to center the center dots into those little cutouts. And you're going to get it a little bit bowed so it's straight. And then wherever they're at, and I've got to turn this so I can see, you want to do the alternating. So every two. And I would think that this would work as well for you to do every skip four and make them even bigger. Okay, so, and then we go, and we line it up, and then we do the alternating. Okay, then you come back over here. I'm going to use this little straight edge here, and then you're going to come over, and I need to go further down, but I'll do it on there, and I'll show you. And I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to just make my straight lines, and make my other straight lines. And in theory, you could do some at the top and some at the bottom, and then just go all the way down. Okay, so I'm actually going to play with that next and see if that actually pans out doing it right here. Okay, that worked like a champ. So I've got upright diamonds all the way across just by doing the first couple rows. So you do as many rows as you feel like you need to do. If you aren't good at lining things up and estimating, then just go ahead and um, do all the rows and that'll be perfectly fine. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and make our first line. And I'm not going to make the bottom line until I get my diamonds going. I might do some indicator lines. Okay, so you do want to make sure that you even this out if you don't have it lined up. What's happening here is my bulb is not set into the, um, the lathe evenly or they're hand blown so it's, um, it's just going to be uneven because it's hand done. And I'm going to use this little micro eraser and that's how I'm going to go ahead and erase my little lines and my little bits. Okay, 
then I'm going to take the little tool and set it right up there on that top line. Okay, I'm arching it just a little bit so that this piece is raised just a teeny bit. It's easy enough to do if I just kind of push on this with my hand. And then I'm going to do my alternating. I'm going to start down here. Whoops, every other one. Then I'm going to come down and let this little cup area fill in. And then I'm going to figure out where my alternating is. And I'll do the alternating. So wonderful to have a little measuring device. So it's perfect little way to get all your little, you know, measuring going without pulling your hair out. I was really pulling my hair out trying to do this. It was really bad. So this makes me feel so good that I've got an easy way to accomplish something that needs to be fairly technical and correct. Whoops! Yeah, be careful. They shoot. They shoot off. All right, so now I've got my dots on, and I want to report. Um, so I work a little bit more fluidly if I'm not on camera, so I went ahead and did my dots all the way around, and it took exactly two songs on my iTunes playlist. So that's how long it took to do the dots all the way. And one of the things that I learned is that the closer you are to the middle of your ornament, then the easier the dot tool works because you're not having to flex it up as much. So keeping these um, cascading diamonds and stuff more towards the middle is going to be really, really helpful. Oh, and the other thing that you can do with this, you don't have to alternate. Let me see if I can pick it up. If you did them in a row and a row and a row and a row like that, then you could have straight lines going down. For example, for this ornament, I made a lot of straight lines, and these little tools right here would have been extremely helpful to make very straight lines and evenly spaced lines. And it's, oh, hang on. So these tools always, always, always just kind of um, start as one thing and then they develop, which is what's happening in my head right now. You could very easily make your marks to make evenly spaced triangles as well. So I've got a double band of triangles there in addition to my band of lines that I could have evenly lined. Um, and you could also use the same little dot tool to evenly space your dots however far around you want to make them. So um, lots and lots of great uses for this. You don't just have to make diamonds with them. So now what I'm doing is I'm using this thing that looks hey, a little bit like a snoring thing. And, I've got, and it actually has little lines that go across it too so that you can line up and um, make sure that you're at the right angles and stuff like that. So I'm doing two things here. Number one, I'm anchoring my hand here on my um, my tool and then I'm making sure that my line is straight against the line it's next to and straight on to the, um, the dots. Now I'm wanting to see how far down I want to take this so I'm wanting to see if these are finished diamonds or not. And my hand has a tendency to run off so I'm going to have to make sure that I'm compensating for that. Okay, so I'm going to have a half here and a half here. So I think that I'm probably just going to leave it at that, and that'll be enough. If I wanted to continue past and make them be more, then I could certainly run it down along. But I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and make all my lines, and, um, and I'll come back. Okay, now I'm going to use the glass stain, which was really an epiphany for me. One time I put glass stain out and I had um, matte varnish out. And when I came back the next day, I had to go take the phone call or whatever. Came back the next day and they both dried and so I peeled them both off my palette. The glass stain was completely 100% clear and the matte varnish was completely cloudy. So there's a lot of clouding ingredients in that matte varnish and um, that explains why the glass stain is so beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to pick some place to start and I'm just going to use my little Pro Round. Um, it is a 70-40 brush 
and I'm going to make sure that I go over the top of my chalk lines and I'll get them outlined and then I'll fill them in. This little pro round will do a little flat end to it and that is brilliant for um, basing these little checks and diamonds. Okay, I've got my lines all on there. Now I'm going to take the Easy Dot tool with the number four on the white and I'm going to put a dot on my line. I'm going to wipe off in between and I'm going to use fresh paint and I'm going to skip every other um, diamond. And the neat thing about this is look at I can go all the way around and my paint isn't going to get messed up and I can anchor my hand right here for steadiness. Alright, I'm going to switch to my Raphael brush and I'm going to mix a little bit of water in my paint so that it's kind of creamy. Okay, I load the whole brush and then I'm going to hug each of these little dots on the top and the bottom with a little stroke. And I'll go all the way around top and bottom. And I'm not using very much pressure. Okay, and they'll end up looking fairly even. Um, they don't have to be perfect, just make sure that they sort of are the same length. Okay, I've got my liner, I've got thinned paint. I've taken and put a line on my, um, my ornament. I'm going to get an angle that I'm comfortable with, and get anchored, and then I will slowly make my line. Look how even that is. When I set my brush, if I have to reload, when I set my brush down, again, I'm going to be slightly over that line so that it blends in. If your lathe starts getting a little bit bumpy, um, go get some petroleum jelly and lube up, lube up this little joint here. Mine is getting just a little bit bumpy. If I wipe off the, the petroleum jelly, and then I end up getting upset that I wiped off the petroleum jelly. So getting a balance, keeping your fingers out of it is the hardest part. Okay, and I missed my mark just a teeny bit, but I think that'll be okay. Now I'm going to make another line right above that. I'm going to use, just set down my stylus get my hand anchored where I want it. The deal is, is not to slide your hand around. Oops, or miss. Okay, and then I'm going to shift my hand just a little bit to make that line match up. And then I'll repeat and do another line there. Okay, now I'm going to take the number four again, and I'm going to take my fresh paint and I'm going to put my number four dots everywhere above where those other dots are. And I'll wipe it off about once every other dot. Alright, I'm going to choose one of my styluses. Um, I need to get out more fresh white paint. I've got the middle size stylus and I'm going to choose the small end of the middle size stylus. And I'm going to make some descending dots. Eh, I think that's going to be too big. I'm going to choose the small stylus. And I'm going to go ahead and choose the big side. I'm going to choose the littlest one. Okay, they're just going to be too big if I start. So see how those do descending dots. Let me get that on camera. So you start right up in the tuck right there and just follow that line. And they just look so darn cute. All right, then I'm going to change to the small size on the big stylus. Keep my napkin handy here. And we're going to do a dot, a dot, and then two dots. And that's going to give it a little bit of a lacy structure. Okay, we're going to add some comma strokes coming out of the middles 
of where they, these little guys, the dots join. I'm using a kind of a big brush, so I don't want to push too hard. And adjust for the angle. I think I'm one of those off. But the neat thing about ornaments is when you make a mistake over here, you flip it around to the other side and you can't tell that it's there. So put your best side forward. Okay, and then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to put a long, be careful of my dots, a long one, every other one. Okay, now I've taken my ornament out and I'm going to put it back in sideways. And I don't want to break it, so we're going to be gentle. Kind of center it on the foam washers. And now I can twist it this way to get where I want, where I want my brush to be. And so then I'm going to get my Raphael brush. I'm using a number two. And I'm going to definitely need a bridge. Get my hand up to the right height. And vision. Okay, so I'm just going to use the tip of my brush. Okay, and then I'm going to do some cross hatching. Okay, I'm going to do that on all of my marked spots. Okay, now we're going to use our fresh paint and we're going to make, I'm going to use my tiniest, which I don't have, tiniest stylus. And I'm going to dot all of the little hash marks. Right where they cross. It just makes them look kind of like fairy dust. It's really pretty. Okay, then we're going to add some long strokes. stroke. There we go. And then we'll close up the top with dots. It's amazing. These ornaments just kind of morph, so don't be afraid to just kind of freestyle and be like, yeah, I like, you know, a little cross hatching, so we'll do some of that. And then maybe, oh, there's a space, so let's put a stroke in the middle of it and that kind of stuff. Don't feel like you have to do everything the same as what you see. Okay, now we'll let those dots dry and then we'll get some glitter going and we'll be finished. Well, I didn't think it would show, but it does. So I'm gonna do dots of clear glass stain at the corners of my Harlequins. And that just gives it a really cool kind of little different effect. Okay, we're gonna add some glitter to our bulbs and I'll do these lower ones first. So I've got bead and glitter glue, and I'm going to go ahead and just do these long skinny ones first and see if I want to do them all. So I take my stroke and do it, and then I put a little bit of the glitter on. Can you tell where my paintbrush is? Right in my mouth there. Okay, and then we just repeat with the next one. When I get done, I'll go ahead and put, um, I'll dump this back in. This has got a little um, a little funnel situation. This is a um, glitter tray. And I'll dump it all back in. I never realized how expensive glitter was until I was pricing for convention. And I think I will want all of these done. So I'm going to do two at a time and then sprinkle. Okay, now that my ornament is dry, then I'll just take a big fluffy mop and I will just brush off any excess glitter.